Hey guys, Tom and Jen from All Secure Foundation. We're on here with Stacy, our amazing therapist. Um, we're going to talk about addiction today. We get a lot of phone calls and we've had a lot of issues ourselves with addiction, no matter what that may look like. So we're going to talk about what it does to you, signs and symptoms, um, how to get out of it, and different different levels of problems, I guess, is what you could call them. So um, yeah. without further ado, let's bring you anything. Well, yeah, I think... Um what we'd like to do is just have a conversation with Stacy and talk to her about some of our questions, some of the questions that we most commonly get. And I guess I'd kick it off right away with the question of how do you know if you're an alcoholic or not? I mean, we're getting a lot of people saying I'm drinking a lot right I'm now. I'm a professional drinker or this is what I do, right? So I'm not how, an alcoholic. How I, do you know? I choose to drink, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great, great question. Very um, uh, topical right now, right? Uh, and and I would say just off the top of my head, of it's a coping mechanism, right? And and so what I hear you both asking, and, and so many of us, um, when is it a problematic drinking when or, or using right uh, substance abuse or um, when do I cross a line? Um, when should I be concerned about this? And when is this social and, and, and acceptable? And um, It doesn't affect so. my work, right? So it's not a problem. Yeah. You know how many times I've heard, well, how many times I've said that? So. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> That's it. That's one of the, one of the things um, I, I often talk to people about. It's not how often or, or how much uh, someone drinks or uses. It's how it's affecting your life. Um, and, and, and the major areas, Tom, you absolutely just touched on that. Work, school, you know, what, what are there negative consequences to one or more er major areas of my life? Um, family, relationships, right? Um, it's uh, legal, community, um, and then also your internal gauge, you know, kind of those little whispers of, gosh, I just, this doesn't... Um, you know, we all drink and use for the same reasons. Um, we really, we really do to relax, to, you know, um, get some relief, to celebrate maybe, um, to just take a break. And, and here's the thing that, that I love about this, um, scientifically, w the human brain needs a break. The human emotion, the human system, it needs a break and, and, and it needs calm and it needs peace. And so the, 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 the tricky part or the unfortunate part with alcohol is that it, it I mean, chemically it is a depressant. So that's where I think um, it, it gets a little tricky or a little more gray for people um, is when it crosses that line and, and no one intends for that to happen. Right. How do you know? So if, you, and I get this a lot from spouses too, saying he says he doesn't have a problem or he not. says he's I got have. it under control, but for the spouse or for the significant other, to them, it's a problem. And, and if you think it's a problem, it probably is a problem, whether they admit it or not. Um, Cause if it's a problem to me and you don't admit it, then it is a problem. How do you address that? Yeah. How do you address a spouse who's saying, Hey, how do I get him to see or her to see this is a problem for us or our family? Yeah, great question. And, and I think that I work with family members and loved ones just as much as I do with people who are concerned about their own addiction. Um, and, and the family members and loved ones obviously have a different perspective and, and it's affecting them in a different way. Um, and, and, you know, another term that I like to use with that is competing attachments. And so if alcohol or, or a, a substance is, is being used to calm and, and bring peace, and I 100% support that. And, and that's, again, it's a biological need. Um, and yet if my loved one is, is over here saying, yeah, but it's interfering with us and our connection um, and, and that competing attachment between us, it blocks us then the, the, the partner, whether it's a full-blown alcoholism uh, diagnosis or not, like you said, Tom, just now, let's look at that because I don't think I have an issue with, with alcohol or substance. But if my partner is saying that if one has a problem, then it's a, a problem or an issue for both. Yeah. How would you recommend um, 
how would you recommend a spouse approaching that? Because that's obviously a really touchy subject. And, and they're going to take away my alcohol. <laughs> the, the source of a lot of <laughs> arguments and, and fighting and, you know, and, and to be fair, some people mm -hmm. might say, well, I think you have a problem because you drink three beers a night. And he might say, well, I've always had three beers a night and it doesn't yeah. affect me. So like, how do you gauge what one person thinks is a problem? Yeah. How do you eliminate right. the judgmental behavior yes. that people throw at you or you throw at yourself, you know, um, or, yeah. or that you feel right. Yeah. You get a sense of that judgment. Um, and I, I, again, I, I approach it with the emotionally focused therapy um, uh, uh, outline. And that is if my partner really essentially that loved one is saying, you know, and essentially I, I recommend and I work again with family members about how that's affecting you, your emotional um, challenges and struggles and pain with that. My partner's drinking um, again, because it takes away from us that's underlying all of that when when he or she says you're having three beers a night and i'm concerned about that um really what i hear her he or she saying is i miss you mm. and 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 i want us to to have a connection and then that other person might hear that judgment or what i'm giving is not good enough right and, and you know what i need me time i need something for me um and so what i do is I frame it in a way that we both, our individual needs and our, our needs as a couple. And, and there, that too is a competing attachment, right? That we all need that, um, the self-care, the calm, the peace, and that we also need that connection um, with, with my partner. So that's how I try to frame it with, with couples is really the message underlying that um, is I miss you. I miss us. That's, that's a powerful way to think about it that I, I've never really thought about it, that the alcohol or drug or whatever you're using to celebrate or cope or to relax competes for that attention. Um, and, and that's tough. And that's when it's an issue, right? When it's not an issue. Um, how do you deal with it when it's an issue, but nobody thinks it's an issue? Now you have both couples burning it down, right? And you're an outside group of friends looking inside mm -hmm. you're trying to give them help but they defend each other no 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 we're good or 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 it's he's a drunk you know while well, they're a drunk you know he's just a big old drunk you know but but they're slurring their words so we get that a lot how do you reach them when really they're responsible for their own devices they both may not think it's a problem yet everyone outside looks in and is worried yep and, and that, again, there's another level or another layer um, with um, problematic drinking or, or substance abuse um, is when the outside family members or loved ones or friends see both partners um, sort of spiraling um, in, in, in a downward spiral or really some, some high risky problematic behaviors. Yeah. And, and so, again, they're using that as you know it's a coping mechanism or it's i'm social using um it's it's good i've got this under control and um that's a tough one because you know you can what what, what did we say last week about accountability and willingness right. you know and, and um all we can do is present that information and i love um you know i don't like the word confrontation um, I like, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm concerned. I love you. Um, can we have a tough conversation? Um, this is really hard for me to, to talk to you about this, but, but I need to let you know what I'm seeing or witnessing because I love you both. Um, or again, there's that attachment. There's that connection that um, because I love you so much, right? But can we do anything about that couple? Probably not. And so there's that level of powerlessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Um, but there's also, you know, I always tell people uh, a balance between speaking your truth, which is about love. Yeah. And also then how can I take care of myself in the pain that my pain and my struggle of watching a loved one with destructive behavior, you know, um, that really the only thing that I have power over is I can, again, verbally 
um, express my concern, my concern, my love. Um, but other than that, um, I, I'm pretty powerless over that as well. Um, you know, I, Jen, you brought up um, that for me too, when I heard that term competing attachment, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it just, whew, I loved it. And here's the thing about competing attachments, again, it, uh, with alcohol or, or chemicals in a relationship, that competing attachments are necessary. Work is a competing attachment. Mm -hmm. Children are competing attachments, right? Um, our health is a competing attachment. Those aren't bad or need to be eliminated. Um, just, to, I, just to identify that um, is a really important tool, I think, for connection and couples. Um, and that, again, going back to the alcohol or the substance, saying, you know, because I love you so much and I miss us and, and, and I love our connection so much, that's why I'm verbalizing anything. And, and even, again, as a loved one, that last example, um, to say, because I love you. Um, and, and so that's a tough one. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. So a thought came to mind, how do we, or what would you say about this thought process? Military group of guys banded together, you know, life and death situations. They'll do anything around the world. And when they're done, they start drinking. Okay. Now they retire. It's like that drinking is they're looking for that connection. The drinking was the end of the day connection. The day is no longer here. The tribe's no longer here. That end of day connection creeps to middle of the day, creeps to all damn day. You know, uh, my mom would drink wine and star from cups, the big, big gulps from God knows 7-Eleven. I never knew it was full of wine all wow. damn day. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, that's an addiction, right? Obviously, you're addicted to well, she lost the alcohol, or, but you can be addicted to, you know, um, like people smoke cigarettes. They're addicted to it, or they're addicted to the scene, the situation, or they're addicted to, every time I get on the phone, I need a cigarette. Not, not that I need to smoke, but when I get on the phone, or when I pull overseas, first thing I do, first thing I did was start smoking. You know, usually the bad guy's cigarettes, but it was, in a, it was a connection to a time, maybe? Absolutely. How do you get guys past that? That you know, and then the next thing, obviously, would be the guys that say, "I drink because I drink. I was born this way. I'm going to be this way, and I'm a drunk." Like acceptance. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and you bring up. I love that that dynamic, um, Tom, and the void. You know, if I take the drinking away, um, I, and when I work with individuals, I often talk about what are the advantages because they can come in. And, and they usually do, and they list all these disadvantages, right? My spouse um, is bitching at me, my, you know, um, I got all this pressure, this person. Um, they list all the disadvantages physically. I know this isn't good for me, but you know what? Um, it, it feels good in the moment. Um, and again, Jen, like you said, sugar, you know? Um, and so- we all have our addiction. I'll tell you, we all got something. Um, and, and so when I work with that individual and I list, I go, okay, let's look at the advantages of what alcohol or cigarettes or sugar or fill in the blank, right? The relationship that I, I need to get out of, but I, I, I keep going back to that person that it, there's nothing. I'm going to a dry well. And so um, whatever that behavior is, that's comforting in the moment. And that's usually what we get to is in the advantages. And, and, and I say that if you don't fill that void with what you're describing, Tom, is, you know, connection. Yeah. Um, um, you know, the brotherhood of um, a tribe, a team, um, I'm not alone. That is the most powerful instinctual feeling and experience a human animal can have and so it, that's a tall order they yeah. come back and they've been so useful and they've been so skilled at what they do right and then they come back and they're like yeah we don't we don't need you at that level anymore um and and i don't have my people i don't have my tribe right yeah. um and so alcohol does fill a really big important void for a lot of people and so I like to acknowledge that 
And I love to point out the advantages um, that, that come along with that behavior. Um, because, in, and at that point, I will look at them and ask them, do the disadvantages outweigh the advantages? Right. You know, do, are the negative consequences overpowering the positive? And, and so that's it, it's a tough one. That's, yeah, filling that void. Um, and then I talk to them about what their options are, right? And what are their options? Or what, how would you feel, especially now, because I know a lot of people are still confined to home. Others aren't. But it's not as easy going to an AA meeting. I don't imagine that first step is ever easy. Well, even the first but, thing we saw open up, we drove to St. Charles uh, day before yesterday. You know, everything's opened up except us around us. So we drove through St. Charles because it was supposed to be open. One just of the, to kind of see people. The main thing that's open, bars towards the end of St. Charles. All the little, Shops the older bars, you know, if you will. Guys hanging out the door smoking their cigarettes and, you know, trying to, and they're all hanging out together, not a mask around and restaurants are open. And then everything else was kind of closed off still. So it's like weird that we all flock to, we're at home drinking. Now we're going to be outside drinking, but we're connected. Absolutely. So it's okay because we're connected now. <laughs> right. Right, it's a joined experience, right? Um, it is the sense or the feeling that we get, yeah. Um, and that's, you know, Jen, when you said, um, so what do we do, yeah? And, and that's, um, that, that's a really big question. Um, and, and what I like to do is customize it to people and, and get from you what you're willing to do, what are your options in your particular area both physically and, and mentally and emotionally. You know, it's like, I'll ask people, do you like to read? And they'll be like, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna list a whole bunch of books for them to read. So it's kind of the same thing, um, you know, resources, especially right now. Um, but the, the, um, the piece about comfort and connection and um, so what, what, what options do we have? Podcasts apps um you know are there close um family members or friends um you know you guys are offering such a beautiful um uh unique resource honestly um for for veterans for the these these guys these people men and women in this tribe who really need the help and, and the safety net right now um and so I, and i don't you know i I don't think people see as what as much as you guys hustle um, and and behind the scenes really truly. I hear it from the veterans that I've been working with um, from you guys and just um, what a what a beautiful resource you you give to them um, that you know. And and when I look at you and and people actually let me rephrase that when people see you looking at them saying, I see you, I hear you, you matter. That is what alcohol does <laughs> for a lot of people. You know, it kind of like fills. <laughs> what was that? We're like booze. <laughs> we, have that, we have that ability to, right. you're okay. <laughs> you're okay for the next two hours and then it's going to be hell again. <laughs> I need a drink. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So I guess as we wrap this up, um, what are the, some of the key things like in a black and white world in a, in a, in a make a plan and execute that plan. If you think you have a problem, you probably do. If others are telling you have a problem, you might want to investigate it. Um, if you're drinking responsibly, then you're drinking responsibly, right? This, this might not be about you. This might not be for you. Yeah. Um, but you probably but just know like, someone who yeah who someone who is or does or needs the help or you might end up in that spot down the road so just like we talk to people in resiliency training the active duty soldiers here's what you might experience down the road you don't have pts now but when it starts to rear its ugly head here's some things to look for you know and the same thing with drinking i mean you may not have a problem now but i mean give it time maybe you know give I it some time to, i'd love to leave with um there's no shame in asking for help no. or even just uh, asking questions. Like, I think so many people are afraid to say, you know what, I just, I don't know if I have a problem or not. I, I think this is happening or that may be happening. Go and research, find the, oh boy, 
Let's wow. remove all shame. <laughs> if I can do this, you can reach out and ask for help. Uh, somebody <laughs> else. Look at this haircut. Right. There's, there's the shame. There's the stuff. Speaking of which, our next video is on shame. So we're going to... We're going to get to that one, but Stacy, um, thank you so much for your insight. I know this is a big topic and we could come back and revisit it. Um, in fact, if, if anyone watching the video, if you have specific questions for us, for Stacy, drop them in the comments, Yeah. email us yeah. And, and we can address it. And we don't want to preach. We want to interact. Right? Yeah. And if you are yeah. having issues or you have a loved one having issues, um, there are multiple, I mean, Al Anon and AA. They, they've been around forever. Where is Anonymous every, every what, Wednesdays now? Right? Where is Heart? started it. We're yep. pushing it out there. Where is Anonymous? Um, yep. It's not just for people that went to Where's Heart. It's not just for veterans. It's for first responders and other people have said, "Can I join the group?" And I asked my buddy Ron, he said, "Bring it. Everybody's invited." Yeah. Right. So that information's on All Secure Foundation Facebook page. Uh, as I well. repost it every weekend and then every day before it. So. So even if I'm you're like curious. To show up. One thing that you guys bring up that I think is so essential, and that is remaining curious. Um, and, you know, I often tell people that when you go, if I suggest um, an AA meeting, you know, just go check it out. I mean, right now is a great way to just go in to a Zoom AA meeting and, and hear if it's, you know, you don't have to invest any physical time um, physically going somewhere, right? Uh, walking into a room of strangers, which I know is not comfortable for most of us. Um, and, and the other thing I like to say about that is remaining curious and um, with AA, no one comes in there, no one walks into an AA meeting and says, I'm so glad to be here. Um, <laughs> Let's get this party going. All right. This is this is where I have um, aspired to all my life, right? No one ever right. says that. Um, I mean, eventually they might say, I'm glad to be here, but in the beginning, no. And the other thing I like to say is um, you don't have to say, oh, I'm an alcoholic and then go to, uh, you know, check out AA meetings. That's what it's there for is to check it out first and to explore and to say, what, what does this resource have to offer? Um, and, and so we don't go to math class knowing how to do math. We go there to learn, right? Yeah, that's, a point. Yeah, that's a great point. We try on our shoes, right, before we buy them. So, uh, you got it. It's right. just the same as all that, you know. Take responsibility, yeah. take accountability. Yeah. And like and we tell everybody else, you, just like you learned what you know now, that you missed right. so much, you can relearn right. anything else. Just just yep. adjust your size, find new fashion or whatever you need help in and do the work. All right. Well, thanks guys. Um, if you need help, reach out. Stay Anybody, curious. Please reach out to us. Stay curious. Don't die on the vine, right? Don't die on the vine. And, and if you have a big pocketbook full of money, you appreciate our mission and you love to help, then reach out as well. Hit the donate button. Um, we're allowed to help people because of generous donors and keep it coming. Keep sharing these. You're not the only one that has to benefit from this. Just watch it, hit share, or hit share and then watch it. Whatever you want to do, but um, help. People ask us, how can I help? You know how you can help? Share. That's not that hard. Hit share. Reach out to more people. Expand our base of who we can help. Absolutely, till next time. Thanks guys. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you.